Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Sorry I haven't been posting videos in a while. To make it up to you, in this video I'm going to show you how to electrify an O4 bike. Now that I've removed the rotating can of the model, the next step is to hammer the shaft for it to go through to the other side. And this way we could mount the pulley here. In this shot you can see that I've removed the hex screw that's holding the main shaft. I realized that there is glue holding the shaft to the can so it's really hard to knock it out. So I use a heat gun to heat it up and that weakens the glue here. And this model comes with this adapter, which is for the big propellers. I'm using this as the base. To cushion the impact as I knock down the shaft. We need to install a retaining seat clip at the end of the shaft. So here I've cut a groove near the end of the shaft using the rotary cutter tool. Remember to wrap the magnets with a foot wrap because the sawdust is going to be attracted to the magnets. And finally, we put back the C clip and the grub screw and the model modification is completed. Now that the electric motor is done, let's get to building the friction drive unit. To make the friction drive unit, we will have a few parts here that we require. First of all, these are parts from the electric skateboard kit. Here I have the ATMM skateboard wheel, which comes with this belt drive pulley. And the kit also comes with um, a metal bracket for mounting the wheel and the motor to the truck of the skateboard. Since we don't have a truck here or a skateboard here, basically we have to make our own axle to hold the bracket which will hold everything in place to make the axle I'm using 90mm long 8mm thick threaded rods as you can see here but these rods are too thin for the bracket to hold them so basically what I've done here is I've used two flat nuts which are 22mm in diameter and two of them hold this threaded rod and that allows the bracket to clamp very nicely onto it and these two nuts here are used as end stops to prevent the wheel from hitting against the metal bracket to protect the bearing of the wheel let's put a washer and then let's put a bearing of the same size. This is eight six zero eight zigzag bearing. And then next we could insert the skateboard wheel. And it free wheels very nicely as you can see here it's not touching the metal bracket. Next we put another washer to protect the bearing. And then we use two more nuts as end stops for the other side. So we're not going to tighten it because if we tighten it, the wheel is not going to move. We're just going to tighten it to the point where it's almost touching the, the bearing of the wheel. And then we use another nut. With the two nuts pressing against each other, that will add as a stationary end stop. And then we can put on the belt drive pulley. And this other bracket, which is from a different electric skateboard kit, will hold the other end of the rod. And we need two more nuts. And then, as you can see here, there are grub screws. And by tightening these three grub screws, I should be able to hold the other side. And that will form a very robust structure, which is strong enough. Then I have the electric motor sitting here to drive the wheel via the pulley system. 
but I realized I have a problem. The belt we should have ordered is too long. 273 mm is too long. And the one that comes with the kit, 225 mm is way too short. So what I'm going to do is to cut this belt and then get the exact length which I require and I will have to order a new belt. After two weeks of waiting the belt has arrived and this is 252mm. This long one is 273mm and I had ordered this previously but it was too long. And the shortest one here is the one that came with the electric skateboard conversion kit. Yep, so the size comparison. The one in the middle is the one that I need. Here's the belt installed and it fits nicely as you can see here. While waiting for this belt, I made a couple of changes to the friction drive unit. I'm using four of these L brackets to give it structure. Basically these L brackets are from IKEA or you can call them IKEA depending on the country that you live in. Basically when you buy uh, wooden cupboards, it came supplied with these L brackets and that's for you to secure the cupboard to the wall so that it doesn't come toppling down and killing young infants. Underneath you could see two more L brackets. Next step would be to design the 3D printed part to mount this. Alright here I'm using air dry clay to prototype the 3D printed mount for the friction drive unit. Here's the close-up of the piece of clay which I used to prototype the 3D printed mount. As you can see here there are various measurements which I have made. And here is the spot where there's going to be a hole. And below two more holes for mounting the fiction drive unit. After drawing the 3D printer part in CAD, here's the 3D printer part itself. It turns out pretty well, as you can see here. It's uh, mounted to the friction drive unit via these two screws here. Along screws and nuts. And here I have a piece of hinge. Basically this is the pivot part. And this long screw here is to allow the whole unit to be mounted to the bike. So let me flex it. And there's a spring here. This is a very strong spring. It has a tension of about 600 grams per mm. That means it takes about more than half a kg to stretch it by 1 mm. And this friction drive unit itself is about 700 grams. I have not drew a hole here for the screw to hold the other end of the spring because I need to figure out how much tension I need to press this orange wheel against the bicycle tire. Alright, I have attached the screw and this is how the whole thing looks like. As you can see, the whole weight is supported by the 10mm board at the top. At the bottom here, you see another 3D printed structure. It's an ESC tray not only to hold the ESC in place but also to protect all the weight from squashing against the electronics. Now what I have here is a 3D printed lever control. Basically unlike the um, throttle grip control system on uh, e-bicycle, this throttle lever system is similar to those that you find on e scoot So to increase speed you just press down the lever and to slow down you just release and if you release all the way you get zero throttle these are not my design and I'll post a link in the description so do check out the links because I'm going to mount this temporarily on the bike and I will need to remove it after using the bike so what I've done here is uh, I have added a GoPro mount again this is uh, something I found on Thingiverse I'll post a link below as well basically I have 3D printed a cylinder here. Where the handlebar used to be now we have a 3D printed cylinder and that cylinder allows me to attach the GoPro packets to it. This way it becomes a quick detach system. 
Well, for the speed control system, I'm using this servo tester. As you can see, I've removed the little potentiometer. Uh, where the legs of the potentiometer used to be, I've soldered three wires. And this leads will go to a 20k ohm potentiometer here. Uh, this is a bigger potentiometer than the mini one on the servo tester. So it's less likely to get damage. To allow the leads to go through, what I've done here is I've drilled a hole and basically the servo tester board will be mounted like so and with the wires going in through this hole coming out through the other side and hooking up to the legs of this potentiometer. It's also worth mentioning that the ESC or electronic speed controller that drives the brushless model needs to be connected to the servo tester pins here Basically, we will connect to S4, which are the three pins. On the board itself, I have already desoldered all the pins. So this way, I'm connecting the three wires directly to the main board. And the wires will go through the same hole to the other side. And here we have one meter of wires to reach out to the electronic speed controller, which is near to the fiction drive unit. Alright, the lever throttle control system is pretty much done. As you can see here, the wires to the potentiometer are all wired up. And on the other side, you can see the servo tester board is protected in heat string to prevent any short circuit. And the other end of this servo cable will book up to the servo lead of the ESC. Alright, in this shot you can see I have hooked up the ESC wires temporarily to the motor wires and I'm using black insulated tape to prevent any shot between the three wires and here I have the ESC heat string removed because the ESC was not working I could not arm the ESC, there was no beeping and I thought I got a dead ESC but apparently after checking out with the multimeter it turns out that the ESC is working fine the only problem is there's no 5 volts output through this servo cable. So now basically I'm tapping 5 volts from one leg of the step down regulator here. And here we have a 3S LiPo pack connected. I'm going to use 6S eventually but for now 3S is fine for the testing. Once the servo connector has 5 volts, you can see that the servo tester board has lit up. and I should be able to get a throttle response. Yep, it's looking fine. It's turning this direction. So if the bicycle wheel is here, it will go upwards and basically um, the bike will be going backwards so we have to reverse the wires
fuse switch is here, throttle control is mounted, the battery is connected, and zip ties all over to the fiction drive unit. Thank you.